House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. All right, everybody, it is House to Home, and we are coming to you. And my, 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 Gina is the traveling one for once. Liz is actually down to safe in Haganya. Gina is is on the road. Gina is, there she is. She was crooked for a second, but uh, G- Gina is in route. I know you're in Japan right now. So, Gina, in, enjoy the amazing food. Enjoy the bullet train ride, you know, while while you can. But let's enjoy this discussion for the current moment. And um, I know we were talking last week about, you know, uh, the warranty that is extended for, you know, the 18 month period. Can we talk today, ladies, about, um, you know, the landlord tenant relationship and exactly how far a landlord has to go in extending, um, you know, services or accommodations or, you know, or or courtesy uh, to a tenant when things like a earthquake or a typhoon happen? Yeah, I think that's an important topic. In fact, we had our Guam Association of Realtors um, Brokers Forum last week, mm-hmm. right, Liz? Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. that topic actually came up uh, because I guess the housing office has given, you know, um, some guidelines to that as far as, you know, does a landlord have to um, discount the rent or prorate the rent because of the storm? And the guideline came back that it's you know it's really at the discretion of the landlord but but the re- real answer is no you do not if the home was not destroyed or made unlivable by the storm and so it's at the landlord's discretion and i in our work with property management and just with dealing with landlords that we're we know of most of them have said listen it was out of my control I know you've been out of power. I know the house got flooded from the rain or whatever caused the flooding, but you know, you still have use of the property um, and we're all going through this together. I'm not prorating the rent. I'm not giving you a discount for the the weeks of the storm. And so that's been what we have gotten from most of our landlords. Mm-hmm. Okay. Liz, is that, is that fairly common? And let's talk about exactly what is considered like, you know, um, uh, acceptable or at least binding, like by the lease, because that, there's that one term that lawyers like to use, right? Force majeure. Right, right. So we did um, get a few tenants and we had to place some of them that um, the wind blew in, the, the, the storm broke the window, the property was not habitable and yeah. uh, the landlord allowed them out of the lease and we had to place them somewhere else. Now, mm-hmm. With, um, there are there were individuals, of course, that lost their roof, um, and then they had to go find temporary housing. So in those cases, as Gina put it, your it's up to the you know between if the property is not habitable, then they have to seek other means of shelter. And at that case, if I'm the landlord and the property is not habitable, of course I would allow the tenant to leave and go find another. Um, property to occupy. And so we've seen a few of those cases and then a few where um, the power or the water isn't on. Um, the Most of the power has been restored, but there are still some areas where the power and the water has not been restored. So in those cases, as Gina puts it, it's beyond the landlord's control. Uh, Guam Waterworks, Guam Power Department, um, you know, if, if the transmission lines are down, it may take a while longer, but still, as long as the house is habitable, um, the lease is still in effect. And I think that is the point that that may be the source of contention between landlord and tenant, right, Gina? Because what exactly, by definition, is is a habitable residence? You, you're right. But, you know, the, our standard lease agreements that we use, it, it defines that in the lease agreement. So... Not some people might say, okay, the air con didn't work for like two days. It's not habitable. And they'd be like, no, you know, your lease says X, Y, Z. It's it's uncomfortable, but it's certainly habitable, right? Now, black I mean, mold is definitely not a, not a situation when you would you would be able to live in there because that's dangerous and that's life threatening. Yeah, yeah you, you know, I, I think uh, issues of security. So I actually, we, um, we had a rental property in Santa Rita where um, one of the windows blew in, the doors blew in. In that particular case, our tenant could not be home. Her husband was out on assignment. She had two children. She was going to end up being in the home herself during the storm. She elected not to be there. She went and stayed with some friends. And that was, you know, I think that was a great idea that she did that. She didn't have to go through the storm with just her children. 
and the home suffered a lot of damage. Mm. Um, and so in that case, you know, she notified us after she was able to return and, and saw the property. And we immediately told her, you know, we completely agree with you. You got to move out of the property. And as mm. a landlord, we elected to do some things that were uh, maybe like her damage goods that were in her household goods that were damaged. We elected to get rid of that for her. We told her, listen, Take what you want to take, whatever you're not taking, leave it behind. We'll pay somebody to go dispose of it. She had a lot to deal with. And, you know, you're in it together, right? You and your land, you and your tenant are suffering together. But there's some gray areas like what if all the trees blew down in your yard, but the tenant's responsible for yard work? In that case, that's a gray area. Your tenant's mm -hmm. responsible for yard work, but it's an act of God. Did they cause all of the trees to fall? Are, do they have access to a chainsaw that you clean up this place? So, you, you know, as a landlord, you make the decision. Do you want to step in there and help them out? Um, you, you know, we, we did. We actually sent somebody out to all the houses and we said, you know, let's get this stuff cleaned up. I know there's some subdivisions that are paying somebody to go around to within the neighborhood to clean it up because it's also not the tenant's fault or the owners that are in that subdivision. So every, you know, you kind of have to use your discretion and see what you could do to help each other out. Okay. Now I know we've talked about this in the past and, and I got to say like, pay attention everybody. If you're watching this on YouTube, because this is one of our like most popular like segments, things that are outside the, the scope and reasonable responsibility of the landlord because like you both said Liz and Gina as a landlord you can put bars on the window you can install a security system you can have you know a uh, tempered glass that can withstand 200 mile per hour winds here on Guam but if the tenant all of a sudden calls you up and says hey Liz I think my house is haunted I don't feel safe in it anymore or you know there, there's these there's these <laughs> edge there's these edge cases. you you've actually said that like before in the past some people say that they feel like there's you know supernatural stuff in their house and that kind of is outside the scope of the landlord right that's right well you know like the typhoon is was an act of god it was a major disaster so again in those particular cases uh as gina put it it's up to the landlord um i just got an email just uh this morning where a landlord decided i'm going to give my tenant a thousand dollars uh for Yes. And I, yeah. I, I, I emailed back, you are so sweet, but it, yeah. it was just for the inconvenience and the suffering. They just, the landlord said, I'm, I want to give her a thousand dollars from the management account. And I just emailed back, you are so sweet. So, I mean, every landlord is different and every landlord um, also have their own properties and their own hardships. So uh, this particular owner is in Japan, so he didn't have the hardship we had and out of the goodness of his heart decided to give his tenant a thousand dollars just to help them through the hardship here. Well, Gina, so, if you can walk down the street in Japan and go see that person and give him a big hug from all of us here at KUM, I mean, that person certainly deserves it. Tracking yes. him down right now. But, <laughs> but you know, Jace, can I, can I mention something? I have a place where the appliances all got shot. I mean, they burn Ooh, out from the, the power fluctuations, the brownouts. So what happens in that case? Well, that's beyond a landlord's control, but you lease the premises with these appliances in place and you have a responsibility to put them back because it also was not the tenant's fault that these right. things happened. So it's a, it's, it's a tremendous expense for any landlord. But at that point, you must provide those items because the home was leased with those items. And again, it's beyond the tenant's control. You've got to provide it. OK, and I want to bring I want to bring up a one specific point, because, you know, we the three of us have been doing this show together forever now. And, and you guys are the best. And we talked about a year ago about this clause uh, that's between the landlord, if the tenant happens to be a military dependent and like some of the expectations about, you know, like, um, like you said, like Gina, like uh, like replacing a defective uh, appliance or um, uh, something breaks or there's something structural and everything like that. Do these um, conditions and everything like that are they are they uniform like across civilian tenants as well as military? Yes, well, everybody should. Yeah, right, Liz. That's right. And with the difference is with the military. I mean, what Gina just explained is a typical thing that depending now, if we wrote up a lease for you and um, 
the la there happens to be a refrigerator and a stove, but the landlord states in the lease, if anything happens, I'm not responsible. So if it blew up in this particular case, that that particular landlord would not be responsible because it did state it in the lease. But going back to the military tenants, housing office dictates certain requirements before the tenant um, occupies the home. So right. we have to meet certain guidelines to comply with the military housing office. So in that respect, refrigerator, as Gina puts it, stove, washer, dryers, those are included and are reflected in the lease. Therefore, if it blows up during the storm and had electrical issues, the landlord would be responsible for replacing those appliances yes. to conform with the lease. Otherwise, the housing office will out, would remove the tenant from the premises. They'll say, well, you're not in compliance with the lease agreement, and therefore either they find another place or um, they move them on base. So we do have to comply with the military and they do have stringent guidelines. Mm -hmm. Now in the storm, I think the Guam Association of Realtors, we met regarding what um, the guidelines in terms of no one was expecting what happened during the storm. I mean, we're used to typhoons, it's been 20 years, but we're looking at what verbiage in future leases to be written so that it is clear that in a case of a storm, what are the expectations? So we're working on that now because this was not expected. What, you know, what this typhoon brought was not expected across the board. Right. And maybe because we've got this entire generation of Guamanians now, young people, you know, like newly married couples who are going to be purchasing homes or renting condos or getting like apartments probably in the very near future, they now are understanding that, yeah, you could have a very, very big storm because they've, they've never experienced one before. And this is one of those things that you have to plan for, keep in the back of your mind if you either are a tenant or a landlord. Yeah, yeah. 20 years. Can you imagine? Yeah. My granddaughter has never been through a typhoon. <laughs> there is a generation that this is totally new for them. So, and and even us, Gina, we, we've been through this before, but we didn't think it would be as bad as it was. Right, Gina? Correct. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? We've done this before. We could get through it. Our people yeah. are strong, man. I mean, we're, we're yes. strong. We're, we're resilient. Tough, we're that's that's not we're just real not. talk, everybody. We, you know, we realize when bad things happen, we we all band together. We help our neighbors out, you know, and w let, boys and girls, this is why be nice to your landlord. Because you never know. You may have a landlord from Japan who says, I'm going to give you a thousand bucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, G Gina, if you happen to see that person when, when you're out there and everything, please tell them, please tell them we say hi and please tell them, uh, you know, bless you. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right. Have, have a wonderful trip and uh, please uh, travel safely. And Liz, thank you as always. And everybody out there, we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. House to Home, presented by REMAX Diamond Realty.